Hello and good morning. Um, here with another extract from a very, very good preaching and um, question and answer session in the spiritual realm with Pastor John Ramirez and his and their friends at a church with uh, Pastor Armen. And the title of this uh, session is Demolishing the Works of Darkness. So we are going to pray a little before uh, I, I take this extract from, from this session, which I am keeping in order to, to have a, a library of uh, important works on spiritual deliverance and spiritual worth here the pastor J. ramirez finishes his uh, session of question and answers q a and after that he's going to explain the basics of deliverance spiritual deliverance uh, deliverance in the holy spirit i think these contents are very very important and relevant for anyone who is seeking for instruction in spiritual deliverance. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of your Son, your only Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we are requesting you to open our eyes, to open our heart, to set peace in our minds so we can understand the message that is going to be delivered for us today thank you lord and we bless everyone who is hearing this small extract and we bless them with courage with strength with intelligence and with spiritual might so that they can find in the bible find in their congregations the tools the weapons and the ammunition to fight the devil fight the works of darkness we pray all of this in jesus holy name amen so let's hear pastor ramirez so him okay. doing Hinduism in the house, mm -hmm. and my mom got involved in witchcraft mm -hmm. because she wanted to solve problems that was going on between her and my dad. But then I don't know really how deep. All what I know that on a certain days there will be screaming in the house. Okay, but what's your there question, girl? You're my, telling me okay, a story. my question is, as a born again Christians and my two other sisters, also a, a born again Christian, I know there is more into Christ than the life we are living now. True. I mean, like now you mentioned, it hits me so hard that it uh, doesn't matter, like at this age, for maybe 30 plus years knowing Jesus, but not growing. No growing, no fruits. Spiritually, no fruits. Right. But rather, we are now in a stage where we are just against each other, no love, blocking each other, and stuff like that. So my question is, and I know there is more to Jesus than this. So my, actually it's rather like I need deliverance, I need prayers, so we can move forward okay. and get deeper. So, so, so when you come up on the altar, I pray for you, and we'll sure, break every please. stagnant, de delayed devil, Every day of the, the stagnant the day, the late devil that's blocking you, hindering you, and blocking Amen. you today. Amen. Amen. So you can go forward and you can bear fruit for Amen. Jesus. And everything we touch for all this family, my siblings, we're not moving forward. I right, mean, not in stagnated. education, not in our everything. Right. It's, it's, called, it's called stagnant. Yeah. Spiritually stagnant. You need to break that in Amen. order to move forward. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. You're welcome. The next time come up. And this is very important because it is pretty much the situation we all live in this 21st century. Those of us who are survivors from 
very complicated political situations in our countries. I have never been in the United States. I have never, never been in the United States. Everything I know about English and American culture is something that I have read or something that I have viewed uh, in videos, movies, and so on. Here in, in this country, there was a lot of violence, a lot of violence back in 40, 45 years ago. And at this precise moment of violence, two forces entered into the, into the country. One was the force of New Age and the other was the force of evangelism or Protestantism, so to speak. So this is the, the founding ground of the present day situations. How these two forces fought each other in order to, to be the predominant force in the social scenario in this country. I don't go, I'm not going to, to explain which country this is precisely. But back in time, the native people from this country lived in plenty of struggle among the tribes, among the families, and they practiced a lot of human sacrifice. Sacrifice of children, sacrifice of women, sacrifice of sacred people, so to speak, and they believed that their blood was relieving them from their their pains from their troubles with nature that's that was the basic attitude of these people after that europeans came europeans imposed their beliefs europeans imposed their laws and the native people were re uh, relegated to uh, the last the last level of this society. Then there came the Cold War and the Cold War brought new problems and an underground movement of guerrilla warfare, warfare uh, started to, to, to become prominent in this country. And on top of that situation, which was a, a war situation indeed with real weapons, with real guns, came the message from, from the, the, the East, that is uh, through the New Age movements, and simultaneously the Protestant Evangelical Church began to, to grow or to become an important religious force in this country. But in time, we all humans are really not a uh, stable ground to stay on, to, to, to stand upon. So religious leaders, Protestant religious right, leaders so also failed and a, a lot of, of stability, instability and doubts began to to settle in the minds of people and in the minds of people like me who were at the end victims of the previous stage of war inside. So this is this uh, this uh, explanation that the br brother Ramirez is going to, to deliver is pretty much related to the situation of people who are unable to understand or to discern between one spiritual force and the other. And at the end, we all try to believe that every spiritual force, every spiritual movement is good because we are so doubtful in our, in our minds, in ourselves, that we prefer to accept everything as good. 
So I want to warn you before I, we switch on the the last part of the preaching of, the, of Brother Ramirez. Th this might be the situation in many of your countries. I have to warn you this situation that we are living today in the 21st century. Here, uh, 500 years ago, or more than 500 years ago, I mean thousands of years ago, we have the old religions here. Very important, very strong religions. Uh, uh, all these religions were organized around the human sacrifice uh, situation and the offering of of blood before the, the ancient deities. And it is very, very curious that the name of the deities here resemble much the name of the, the eternal God in Israel. Because they say the, 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 the God Chak, the God Chak, he wants human blood. He, he, he needs human blood in order to stay alive, in order to give the our um, our goods for the, for the for the season and the, and the name chak is pretty much like the name ja with is uh, the name of the lord in the hebrew culture so we can we can see the starting point of all this scenario this this spiritual warfare scenario then came the european idolatry the european idolatry came uh, and, and this European idolatry stood, I mean, stood here rooting its uh, idolatric beliefs, I, its idolatric um, religion, so to speak, for 300 years, on top of the thousands of years previous that these people adored the forces of nature, ancestors, and adored death and the, the dark angels. Uh, uh, while offering them uh, blood sacrifices. So with uh, the European idolatry came the false notion that uh, uh, there is a warrior Jesus. There is a warrior Jesus that is, uh, has to be imposed in the, mind of, in the minds of people. This is not the true Jesus, but it's a, 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 a forgery of a Jesus. Then with, along with this, the exploitation of natives and all this religion give, stays alive, 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 hiding itself inside the, the European idolatry and hiding itself in the minds of people because uh, these native people were exploited, were economically exploited, socially relegated to the last uh, status of, uh, uh, of, of the society. Deprived of education, deprived of, of practicing the, their own spirituality, but in public, because in the in in the hidden, they still practiced their own ancient beliefs. Then came the Second World War, two hundred almost two hundred years after one hundred and fifty years of independence here, and then came the Second World War, and after the Second World War, there was a, a sudden um, uprise of communism everywhere, especially in these places. And the Cold War began. And after the, uh, during this situation, at the at the last ten years of the Cold War, came this last scenario where when New Age uh, religions came into the scene, and the Protestantism began to 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 be strong in the social situation, so to speak. So the question is, what is going on? Because that Protestantism 30, 40 years ago is not the same Protestantism that we are seeing today, either in the United States, Europe, or Latin America, or India, or Africa. So there are a lot of questions left. For us. So that is the importance. There is the importance of this knowledge that Brother John Ramirez is uh, communicating us in this session. So let's prepare for the last part 
very important part of this question and answer sessions with Brother John Ramirez. That concludes our Q and A session. Hope right, you let, let me enjoyed. let me let me talk to you. I want I just want to share a quick word with you, and also I just want to share a quick word with you. Don't be texting my meeting. The mm -hmm. Lord says to you, He wants you like this. He don't want no stuff over your head anymore. The Lord said he wants you like that. He said to tell you he wants no stuff over your head. He said he don't know who told you to wear that, but that's not God. He said that's not the Lord. He said he wants you like that. He can see the radiance of Jesus Christ, his son, right there, just the way you are. Okay? No more head covering. That's not of God. I don't know who told you that. No, you don't need it for prayer. You use the heavenly language and use the Holy Spirit that's in you for prayer. That's religious, and God said he doesn't honor that. God honor you the way you are. The way you are. God said he honor you the way you are. You're anointed, you're powerful sister, you love God, and you have a special anointing upon your life. God said that when you cover your hair that way, he sees religion. He don't see Jesus. He said no more covering your head. Amen? If you do, I go to your house and cut it. Okay? There's a new season coming into your life. And the old things have passed away. And the new things are coming into your life. And people you thought that was with you, it's not really with you, says the Lord. There would have been an interruption. There have been a hindrance and a delay of your calling, your purpose, your destiny God called you to be. God said he didn't call you to be a follower. He called you to be a leader. And he said there's people in your life that he's going to uproot. And I'll tell you in private who those people are that he's going to uproot out of your life. He said, if you don't listen to what he's telling you, you will never bear fruit, and then you, he will hold you accountable because you owe him something that he giving you, and you got to give him back to him bearing fruit. Multiply. The Lord said the word, he used the word multiply in your life. Amen? Your good sister, your genuine sister, your very genuine person, your good sister, you have a good heart. Okay, you're not a deceiver, you're not a liar. Okay, you walk right with God, but you're allowing people put religion in you when Holy Spirit is saying, That's not, I'm not there. Holy Spirit said, I'm not there. And the Lord said, Don't worry about the end times anymore. Teach and disciple people about now. Now. He said, No more end time. He said, It's a lie from the devil. He's distracting you from what you're supposed to do today. It's distracting you from what you're supposed to bear fruit today. It's distracting you from your gifts that you have today. You're very gifted, sister. You're a great writer. And you're gift, gifted, sister. God called you to disciple people, young people that come to the Lord. Disciple them with the word of God. John, Luke, Matthew, and Mark. Disciple them from there. God's going to use you in a powerful way. You're going to see, you're going you're gonna to have to one day rent a little building to bring people in to teach. Man, and I'm not putting you on display. I respect you. I, I kind of know you. I don't know. I don't know you for real. I don't know you personally. I don't know you personally, but I know you in the spirit. Uh, you've been following too many things, and God says stop following, because it's going to lead you to a dead end. God never called you to follow. He called you to lead. You have a leading. You have a. You have an anointing to lead people, not to follow people. There's people that you follow that you have a bigger anointing and a bigger calling in your life than they do. And the enemy has brought them into your life to bring a distraction, bring delay to set you up so you won't bear the fruit that you're supposed to bear for Jesus Christ. And that's why that's your choice and it's hindering your home. It's hindering your home. It's hindering your home. And I'm not saying, I'm not just going to say this last thing. There's a lot of discouragement in your home. I'm going to tell you that in private situation that you need to decide and make a decision on. Not, people don't need to know because they're saying this. You know, people are crazy. Christians are gossipers. But things that you have to make a decision. Either I go with Jesus or I entertain this. You're going to have to cut the rope make a decision and I promise you once you cut the rope you're gonna go whoosh, up here with Jesus because those things been holding you back from God's best and I know I know your son I hung out with your son the past couple of days cool as cat 
the coolest cat. That's that's a that's a slang word in the ghetto. It means like the, the coolest person in town. You've done a good. You've done an amazing job. Well, this is very important that uh, he is uh, underlining to this lady that she has to leave her religion's paraphernalia. Uh, this is something that has happened to all of us, that we all have acquired a series of uh, uh, accessories in order to, to feel alive in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world because what is happening actually is this you see that these these are the old religions here probably in your country there are other old religions and all of them based on snake worshiping ancestor worshiping death worshiping and this is everywhere in the world and it this has become it is so strong that it has become a uh, uh, um, a subject matter of uh, sensationalism and the yellow press and, and the yellow media all over the world. So here we have the old religions connected with the European idolatry, which has been on the scene for 2000 years, disguised as a Christian congregation. But it is witchcraft, it is idolatry, it is a rebellion uh, against the Holy Spirit these guys as a Christian belief as a, as a Christian doctrine and of course the the terrible times uh, when Europe Europe turned his face uh, away from from the old Christianity so to speak and began searching for the, their own ancient religions so this this comes uh, from the from the exploitation of natives and the second world war this was the scenario it, it lasted for almost 500 years with the exploitation of natives there came the old african religions that uh, were connected were connecting with the the european people who were exploiting natives all over the world so this was a second a second section, a second part, but we can separate it from what we are going to explain now. So, communism and Cold War, this was the age of unconfidence for your neighbor. You could not see if your neighbor was uh, uh, spying on you or your neighbor was uh, gossiping about you because of your beliefs or your social interests your social ideas so to speak this was everywhere in the world and then came the new age around uh, by the the 70s by the uh, 1972 1973 up to 1980 something so this scenario comes along with a, 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 a deliberate uh, effort to to make strong the Protestant movements everywhere in the world, the Cold War, the end of the of the of the Iron Curtain, and the in the relevance the, the of Protestantism back in the late 1980s. But what happened now? That these New Age movements have learned to survive these new age movements have learned to survive by the by the media so there you have uh, ancient aliens that you have the the ovni or the ufo um, deception whatever whatever there is so this is the the the, the root and the tree of the of the all this um, religious and uh, modern religion all from all religion to modern religion situation everywhere in the world this has this has lasted for at least 7000 years since the sumerians according to the chronology of the of the scientists and what happened with the protestant with the protestant movement what happened with the protestant church this 
it began to fragment. The Protestant church has begun to fragment into small tiny pieces. Into small tiny pieces. This is the Protestant church with a uh, who calls uh, uh, himself or, or itself the representative of Jesus on earth. So this is the Protestant Christian church. <laughs> Nothing. And this tree stands still and strong everywhere in the world. So this is what Pastor Ramirez is going to speak about now. All right, quick. Let me let me let me talk to you from let me talk to you the devil's game, the devil's mindset, the devil's ideas, the devil's plans and cycles, how the enemy works against Christians. You want to hear it? How the enemy works with Christians. The devil knows the devil don't play checkers with Christians. He play chess. The devil never played checkers with Christian. He played chess because what you can kill quick, a chess game, you can win quick. Yeah. Right? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Kill me. The devil likes to play mind games because chess is a mind game. Chess is a mind game. You believe that? You know how to play chess? Any of you know how to play chess? You play chess. It's a, it's a strategy game. It's a mind game. Chess is a mind. That's what the devil plays against the church, against Christian. A mind game. A strategy game. I don't have to, chess is what David did, checkers is what David did with Goliath. David killed Goliath quick, bang, out. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, because hey, David didn't have that much of a good aim. It was the Holy Spirit that killed Goliath, amen? I mean, quick, what you kill quick in the spirit realm is not your fight. It's a diversion for the real fight to show up, because what you kill quick in the spirit, you hear me? It's not really the fight, it's preparing you for the big fight. Because the big fight will be Saul. Saul was the big fight. Saul was the big fight for David because David ran away from Saul for 13 years. Have you been running from something for 13 years? You said, when is devil going to stop running after me? Have you? I look like this guy. Stand up for me. Stand up. I look like that in the spirit. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Don't let the shirt fool you. Man, that's my homeboy. Understand? The devil played chess game. The Bible says, the Bible says, the reason, the, the reason you stuck is because when you play chess, you have to look at the pieces that you're playing with. You have to look at the game that God has in front of you to the season that you're going. Chess is a thinking game. In Christianity, we call it discernment. In, we call it discernment in Christianity. I'm discerning the times I'm in, the season I'm in, what's in front of me, what God is taking me. How could you be a Christian that you're mediocre and you have no sense of direction where you're going? That's why Christians, when you don't have a purpose, you don't have a destiny, you don't know the address of your purpose, your destiny, you go anywhere. You go anywhere looking for something that will stick because you don't know the purpose. Your destiny. God has called you for purpose and destiny. God didn't call you to sit in church. That's just a part of your life. God has wrote a story about you. But you ain't connected to your own story. Because the devil is playing chess with you. Chess game. A strategy game. A thinking game. A, a, a discernment. You ever, you ever been there? You say, well, I think he's going to make this move over here. I think he's going to make that move over there. I think he's going to... I think if I move this piece, he's going to move that piece. That's called the sermon in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You with me? Wake up, people. So I'm stuck. John 10.10 10 said the devil, come, the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. Agree? What are the weapons that the devil uses against the believer? What are the weapons of his warfare? He has no authority over you. Because ask Job, your brother Job, if I were to bring Job in here, he would testify that the devil had to ask permission to bring my hands down. The devil is a sandpaper that God used to polish you. But instead of you saying hallelujah, you say ouch. It's 
I, I dig it. Sometimes I feel like God needs to pull me back on the stand like a clay. Pull me back there. Grab another clay, Lord. You already bruised me up, beat me up. I smell like toast. Uh, pick at someone else. But this is what God is showing you. You with me? God is showing you that. God is showing you it's a chess game. What are the weapons of the enemy? Weapons of the enemy. Hindrance. How many hindrance you had in your life? How many blockages you have in your life? You've been blocked that you don't want to read your Bible anymore? Your Bibles don't taste good? Have you been blocked every time you pick up the Bible? Oh, God, I have to read this again. Blockages. Have you, have you don't want to go to church, but you can go to the mall? Have you been blocked that you don't see your next breakthrough? You're not moving from glory to glory? Blockages. Blockages, hindrance. Have you been hindered? Have you been hindered in your mind, in your thoughts, and your thinking? You're just, and even in your sleep. You sleep, you sleep, you sleep, but you don't get rest. Have you been there? Hindrance in your dreams. Hindrance in your, in your way you sleep. Hindrance. How the devil is stealing your sleep. You sleep eight hours, but you don't rest. Hindrance. You with me? Hindrance. Blockages. Delays. Have you been in places delayed that you said, man, I should have been further up down the road. Where am I doing here? Have you been there? I should have been further down the road. I should have accomplished more this year. I should have done more of my time this year. Have you been there? Have you been in a place that you feel like time is passing you by and you're not growing, you're not moving, nothing is happening? The Christian life don't taste good anymore. I guess I'm the only one, right? Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Have you been there? Have you been in that, in that, in that spiritual condition? I see you. I'm in a coma, Lord. People don't want to hear the truth. Challenge you with the truth. Challenge you. Hindering. Distraction. Have you been distractions in your life? Distraction. Distractions. In your life. What are your distractions in your life that's stopping you from God's best? What are your distractions? They got a name. Everything has a name. My boyfriend is my distraction. Get rid of him. I'm stuck in pornography. Get rid of your computer. Sell it. Give it to me. I don't do porno. And I'm not mocking you. Well, you could be stuck. I'm not mocking you. I'm saying whatever is the distraction, get rid of. You hang out with the wrong Christians. Hang out with Christians, all they do is cry all day. Now you cry more like my, my daughter's 32 years old. She don't even cry that much. But, but yeah, my daughter's 32. I'm an old man. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we are going to finish this extract, which was very, very interesting to hear from Pastor uh, John Ramirez at the Arment uh, uh, Congregation. Pastor says Goliath was playing checkers for David, but Saul was playing chess for David. He clearly stated the difference between what is the initial stage of a, of a battle, which for the, uh, most of the times is going to be a destructive uh, battle, and the real battle, which lasts for decades in the, in the life of a human being. I will underline to the end of all this very, very interesting uh, metaphor, metaphoric speech that the, the, the brother John Ramirez delivered, that the worst sort of spirituality is predicti predictive spirituality. It's when you are telling things like this. Let me, let me explain. For example, I go to Jesus because ding, ding, ding. this is predictive spirituality. I go to church because ding, ding, ding. this is predictive, predictive spirituality. And worst of all is when you say that everything is going to to be dismantled the way you want 
the way you believe or the way you uh, seem to to read in the scriptures this is predictive spirituality predictive spirituality is not a good way to enter into into the church is not a good way to enter into the church <clears throat> i will say an advice in order not to extend much and start speaking about me when my words are are becoming less and less when my words become less and less i start speaking about my own life which is not good you cannot you cannot use a comparative spirituality too you, you can compare my my own situations with your situations with the situation of john ramirez because though we have common experiences our lives are completely different but we have common experiences that's true and probably we we have common goals that's it that would be very good but we always have to be an open eye an open eye in, at night an open eye an open eye at midday an open eye in the morning an open eye in the evening because we don't know what our troubled mind is going to do next because we are so used to have this predictive spirituality vice in ourselves so i am inviting you if i can give you a good a good uh, starting advice a good starting point advice a good advice uh, before you start walking to the goal is fight against your pride fight against your vanity they are the real enemies your pride and your vanity so in the holy name of jesus i will tell you something in Hebrew. that's not important really but this the lord said to prophet hoshia Asurlo yoshienu al sus lo mirkav velo no mar velo genu le maseya deinu asher bechayer uhamiatu. This is in Prophet Hoshia. And Amen. In Jesus Christ, I leave you today, for today, and seek for a way to avoid predictive spirituality and become a follower of Jesus, just as Brother John Ramirez advices. Thank you and see you later.